Menschen. Hello and welcome to another edition of Hashtag Now Smoking. This is the classic edition. I'm your host, Gary Korb, executive editor for CigarAdvisor.com. And today, I'm joined by managing editor, John Pulo, once again, for another classic edition. Hello, mon Freund. That's right, and How we are, are smoking a real classic here. It's the yeah. La Traviata Divino. Oh. It's a 5x50 Robusto. Maduro. And this is the Maduro, now an original. CAO. Just throw, yeah. With throwback time, so cla right. classic. Tell me, tell me a little bit about classic edition because I know a lot of times when you're doing hashtag now smoking, mm -hmm. it's about new cigars, but it's also, yep. what we, you know, ha this has been out for a while. It's been out for a long time. Actually, the the cigar originally came out in 2009 yeah. with an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, mm -hmm. and then 2010 they introduced the Maduro with the Connecticut Broadleaf, and that's wow. what we're smoking today. Okay. And the reason why I do these classic shows is because I'm trying to get. Uh, some of the younger smokers and newer smokers too uh, introduced to some cigars that have been around a long time, like me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I think it might appeal to their palate. So, okay. uh, and that's why I have you here. So, do you think it's worth also? So, do you think it's worth going after a classic smoke like this to kind of see how well it stands up after, as you said, ten years? Absolutely. In the in mm -hmm. the in humidors. That's right. Okay. That's the, that's well, the I'm thing. I'm willing to give it a go. All right. Well, I'm going to. Uh, Cut it. I see you already cut yours. I I'm, did. I'm looking at it. It's got I a beautiful broadleaf wrapper. Mm -hmm. um, Solid, it's a little toothy. well packed. It is well packed. Ooh, getting yes. kind of a sweetness of the uh, filler there. Mm -hmm. And the cap is really nice. It's a triple seam cap. It's really well done. Let's see how it cuts. That sweetness is a little chocolatey. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, you're right. in case you're wondering what kind mm -hmm. of sweetness we're sensation it's kind of think cocoa yeah it is kind of, yeah like absolutely and of course dark, dark chocolate kind of type of thing what's interesting is because this is a connecticut broadleaf and this cigar is reputed to have some you know kick to it mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple of hair leaves in there we'll get into the blend too but um the connecticut broadleaf is going to give it a little more sweetness than probably the habana so we'll see well here's one thing already Mm, okay. Because of the significant amount of Lajero on the cigar, it's going to take a while to get it lit. Okay, well, there's two Lajero leaves. One's from Nicaragua, Pueblo Nuevo, and the other one is from the Dominican. But the blend is generally, in, in terms of the filler, Nicaraguan, Dominican, and then there we go. we'll get into the binder, and we already talked about the wrapper, but... Now, it has been a long time since I smoked this cigar, or, or, or La Traviata <laughs> in general. The last time I did was for our CAO, our, our uh, Essential Guide to CAO cigars, mm -hmm. and we did the Habano right. uh, that time around, and we had mentioned that it was available in this Connecticut yeah. broadly. Now, that was a couple of years ago, but before that, and you said this came out in 2000... The Maduro in 2010, but the original blend in okay. 2009. Because I look back, mm -hmm. and Cigar Aficionado... <laughs> in 2010, mm -hmm. called this line perhaps the finest cigar ever made by CAO. That's heavy yeah. praise. I mean, you know, I would so, they, say call, so. they called it solid performer, no nonsense. They gave a couple of taste notes, but I don't. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll get into our own right, rather than tell right. you what they tasted ten years ago. Right. Uh, exactly. But, so, so if that's the bar, mm -hmm. the finest that they've made, and this is a pre-acquisition cigar, in the fact that's that right. when this was first blended. Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. The Osgener family was still making CAO cigars with John Huber. That is correct. That's correct. We're going to talk about John Huber a little bit too. Okay. And um, mine lit up really nicely. Mm -hmm. What are you tasting? Well, once you actually get it lit, it burns nice. There's a little bit of sweetness, a lot of cedar. Yeah. Yeah, it's very woody. I'm getting that too trying to see how it how it's kind of finishing and what it's leaving behind a little bit of pepper yep I was gonna say spice okay okay so that's primarily what's up front and in my face so far mm -hmm. all right well I think we're off to a good start let's see what happens when we get deeper into act one all right we are in act one of the CAO La Traviata Divino Maduro with John Hulo our managing editor mm -hmm at CigarAdvisor.com, and I... Close to the other John Pulo. Yes. <laughs> you know, there's actually only two of us. Really? In Pennsylvania. Wow. I never thought there were that many Corbs, but there's a Corb in Ohio. It's actually a much more common last name than even mine. 
Mine's really? terrible. I, I, mine, my, my childhood was full of nicknames, none of them flattering. <laughs> but that's fine. I'm, I've obviously moved past that. But back to La Traviata, a very slow burner. Yeah. Yeah, a uh, nice firm ash. Uh, mm. I'm, I'm getting a lot of woody notes out of it. It's mostly very cedary for me, and just a little bit of that sweetness and the pepper. So it's the sweet, the spice, and, you know. Characterize the sweet. Because to me, it's still kind of hanging on that dark baker's dark chocolate. Yeah, it's, it's a bittersweet. It's a dark chocolatey. I, you know, if, that there's, kind of, if there's one thing, I'm going to tell you one thing I know about Gary, <laughs> is that he has for a long time recommended that w if you're going to smoke a cigar, enjoy it with a piece of chocolate because they pair together fabulously. Yeah. Uh, a, what a real nice Maduro will do sometimes, and what we're finding so far, I think, mm -hmm. in this La Traviata Maduro, is that pairing is already done for you. So yeah. you've, you've been on to something for a while, <laughs> so much so because I think it really helps uh, mm -hmm. codify, amplify yeah. that, that sweetness that comes inherently, naturally. Right. from a, a good broadleaf That's wrapper. true, they use a really good wrapper. And uh, you know what, maybe one day I'll bring, you know what, I really love chocolate covered almonds. Because mm. I like almonds too. With uh, Decadent. With, yes, very decadent. <laughs> but I found the original press release from July 29th, 2009, when really? the cigar, when the original came out. It's the beauty of the internet. Everything <laughs> lives for Everything lives there. And uh, it says here, Nashville, July 29th, 2009. CIO is one of the world's foremost premium cigar manufacturers. Okay. And they announced today that it will debut its CIO La Traviata cigar brand at the IPCPR, <laughs> 77th annual convention in maybe. New Orleans. My God. And you know, I was at that show. Yeah. And I went, um, I, I went over to the booth and it was packed. They always had a lot of people in their booths. And John Huber was there. And John Huber was mm -hmm. in charge of like all their events and all their planning the and marketing, marketing and you know, a lot of stuff like that. And I got there kind of late. Okay. And I said to John, I said, gee, is it possible I can get a sample for review? And he goes, Gary, they're gone. They're gone. Zero, not a zilch. You know, it's like, Strike so I said, oh, he says, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. I'll try, if I can get you, I'll try to get you. So I'm walking around, you know, the booth looking at some of the other stuff that they had, and, and he, he taps me on the shoulder, goes very, you know, discreetly hands me a, uh, a Divino, oh, actually. Oh, hush, hush, actually. Yeah, so nice. I, I said, hey, man, that's safe. You know, and I'll never forget him for that. Clearly, <laughs> 10 years later, it's still, uh, it's, it's still resonant. <laughs> he's such a good you, man. You, he's, he's kept your promise. You have not forgotten. <laughs> that's right. Fair enough. Um, anyway, the original La Traviata brand from Cuba debuted around the turn of the 20th century. It was about 1901, 2, 3, or 4. Something like um, that, right? at the And it was made at the Tabacalera Cubana which is located at uh, Agramonte number 106. That's the address <laughs> in Havana. So basically what they wanted to do was resurrect the character and taste and fla you know, flavor of the old Cuban cigars that came out around that time, which I, I guess was hard to do. I mean, well, how, are you, <laughs> how are you gonna do that? I mean, okay, granted, so this is 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and we know cigars can age for decades. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, if you got your hands on like, how would you know what a 110-year-old cigar tastes like? I, got, I, I mean, don't know. Could you find some s examples of this, smoke them and see what they taste no. like? Because I, I would be curious to find out, because we know as tobacco ages, right. it does lose some of its complexity. That's true. Especially as the flavors marry in and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You know, so the, the, this is, this for, for a flavorful cigar, you kinda, I think you have to add some imagination mm -hmm. to probably what are the typical Cuban flavors of the time right. that you could still probably get some of if you mm -hmm. happen to find your way into some really old cigars. Well, I, I really don't smoke a lot of Cubans, but when I do, I, I notice they do have a certain character to them. And there's something about okay. the wrappers, the way they look, mm -hmm. and things like that. And there's just something in the smoke that, that I guess tells you it's Cuban, but then if you're smoking it, you know that. Back to the press release here. Uh, what they did was uh, they they made this what they call a, a full bodied. Did you say it's full bodied? At this point, medium, it's medium, medium plus, now, right? Yeah, and full we'll flavor. Yeah, and it combines an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, which is the original, not not this one, uh, with a Cameroon binder. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Get a little spice mm -hmm. and some a little extra sweet. And two different Lajero filler tobaccos, as I said earlier, from Pueblo Nuevo Farm. I guess they had a farm in, in Nicaragua, and then in the Dominican Republic. So, um, but I like the broadleaf. 
right. really do. I like I like the little extra sweetness. So it's and it's got a nice kind of silky sheen to it. Yeah, it's the got a you nice know there's, there's just a little bit of tooth to it, mm -hmm. uh, so it gives it you know just a, a just a nice bit of texture, um, and and some of those typical broadleaf mm -hmm. flavors are there, which is a nice way to get it started. Yeah. Uh, an inch in, you can see how the ash is performing so far. It and is. I was just going to say tight yeah. and white. <laughs> and it's you know v holding on very solidly, you know this was for for a I, I I don't know that they were really making a lot of Maduro a hundred years ago, uh, well. so again I, I, there's I'm sure there's a bit of imagination mm -hmm. that went into using this, mm -hmm. um, you know even the box artwork is yeah. circa 1901. I, I love this kind of stuff. This neoclassical. Ago. And you know what's interesting yeah. is I can see a little bit of where John Huber mm -hmm. still gets some of his design inspiration for crowned heads. Uh -huh. Like think of uh, La Imperiosa, right? Right. It has the same because again, it's a revived mark. That's a, that was made at La Corona, mark. actually, yeah. and it's got that same kind of look. So I think this has been a thing with him for a while, just and, until he gets a chance to flex it. <laughs> you know, but but yeah. you, you you know that's, that's well, you know, that. I think this, and you you've noticed this a lot. Yeah. That when a cigar comes out in, like, say, a, a natural wrapper, yeah, uh, they say, "Oh, let's try it in a Maduro," you know, mm -hmm. and then a year later or so, they'll put it out in the Maduro, or we'll just put it out with both wrappers, you know, at the right, same time, right. you know. So, because I guess you know there is a market for Maduro, and a lot of guys like Maduro. How do you feel about it? Do you, do you smoke a lot of Maduros? I do. I I went through a phase. Uh, you know that all, all I wanted to do was smoke Maduro. I became mm -hmm. particularly attached to Partagas Black. Yeah, I know you like this. Uh, <laughs> it's still one of my favorites to this day. Um, you know, I, I, I just it, you know the thicker, oilier, heavier taste, not necessarily stronger, but more powerful taste, mm -hmm. and and that kind of sweetness. But then it's just kind of like it gets one dimensional after a little while. Okay. You, you know, you gotta expand your palate. You gotta, you gotta try some different things. And so, it's, you take, I took a couple of steps back, and, and I still enjoy a good Maduro from time to time. Mm -hmm. But I've, you know, found myself developing a taste for uh, Corojo more than I had before. I find myself mm, developing yeah, like a taste it. for uh, certain Habanos than mm -hmm. I had before. Okay. You know, some of the more exotic wrappers, like you find on. Uh, you know some other brands and especially some boutiques. You just like to try them to see what they're like. Op you know, open your, open your horizons, open your palate, try new things. I agree, and this one's doing great. So uh, we're just about ready to cross over to Act Two. Let's see what happens then. All right, we are in Act Two of the CAO La Traviata, the Vino Maduro. This is a five by fifty robusto. Look at this thing. And wow, look at that ash. And I'll tell you. So what? Uh, what flavors are you getting at this point? I'm, I'm still getting that like nice woody note and uh, the sweetness off the wrapper and some of that. A lot, pepper. a lot of the same. Uh, mm. the, the 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 dark sweetness is a really good cigar with coffee. It is because the acidity of the coffee opens it up nice. Mm -hmm. um, so and there's a little bit of a, a citrusy finish mm -hmm. to it, um, but roasted nuts, cedar. Which there is, yeah, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind yeah. of close in, in a lot mm -hmm. of ways, so it's kind of tough to tell. The pepper has kind of fallen off mm -hmm. a little bit. So anyway, I have to show this, this, this shirt I'm wearing today. This was from the CAO 2006, and this is when they were the uh, RTDA. This is a, sh a shirt that uh, I guess John, John Huber must have talked to Ed Harvey. John's a big tattoo guy, you know. Right, yeah. So, and I think Harvey designed this shirt or something too. So, I have, I've never worn it until today. It's 14 years old. Would you, t you, t would you tear the tags off and throw it on <laughs> after the first time? In 14 I got years. Got so, No, it's a uh, best line I, I heard. Just, today, best line I heard today actually is, is, is. So now you actually get to go ahead and say, "I've got t-shirts older than you." That's right. 14 <laughs> years do. old. I do. I do. Anyway, um, I was going to ask you a question about your palate. Like, yes. You know. Um, has it changed over the years? Do you, do you find that you smoke uh, a, a particular type of cigar more often than um, others? I know we smoke everything. I here, smoke but. a wider range of cigars. Right. And I think that's just something that, uh, you know, ex experience matters. Mm -hmm. Not experience that you learn, although that's part of it, but right. experiencing different things matters. 
So it used to be about how many cigars can I get for 50 bucks? Right. Right? Yeah. And, and that was the kind of thing, and, and you just latched onto those. Because it was a good deal, mm -hmm. they tasted good, because it tasted like a cigar. Sure. And then after a while, it would become more of, hey, that's a Connecticut, I know what that is. Okay. And so you, you kind of find yourself, and like I asked before about Maduro, you kind of yeah. find yourself gravitating towards it because you know what it is, you're familiar with it, you've decided you liked it. Mm -hmm. And then it's, hey, I recognize that brand, I'm going to try it, even though it's different from the other ones that it has. So you now yeah. you're experiencing, you know, in, in a lot of ways, it's like food. Okay, you're not going to develop your tastes or, de or, or develop a taste uh, of, for things that you enjoy unless you try different things. I used to be this way, sushi. I had zero interest in sushi 15 years ago, yeah. right? But yeah. then all of a sudden, you know, I'll Me try too. I'll try California roll. Okay, fine. Somebody twist right. my arm. Start with the veggies. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. And then it's just like, okay, well, I'll try a tuna roll. Okay. And then you go from there and you just kind of start progressing to different things on the menu to where it's now, you have an idea what some of these different tastes are. So now... It's wide open. You will try lots of things. It's just mm -hmm. that step-by-step -step progression of just adding something new, adding something new, mm -hmm. and, and, and developing a taste for it. And you'll, you'll know whether you like it or not. And that's how you'll expand. At least that's how it worked for me as mm -hmm. far as expanding my palate. Yeah, I agree. And speaking of uh, expanding and uh, finding new, new flavors and things, have you retrohaled this? Because I just did. And it's, it's kind of nice. Wow. I, um, so that's a subjective thing. <laughs> If you, if I have found, if you want to find the pepper yeah. in the cigar, retrohale it. Yeah, it does, at least this that's does what it was pepper. for me. Are you finding it's gotten stronger? Is it more full-bodied now? I'm finding the, it more the, full. The, it's fattening up. It's becoming more of a well-rounded, yeah. more meaty cigar. Oh yeah. Strength-wise, it's probably still about the same, but body-wise, right? Uh, the 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 intensity of the flavors is starting to pick up, and mm -hmm. it's lasting longer. That general heaviness is lasting longer on my palate after mm -hmm. I exhale. I agree. And since we're getting close to the band, let's see what happens in act three. All right, we're in the final act of the CAO La Traviata, the Vino Maduro. Mm -hmm. And I gotta tell you, this has been amazingly consistent. Really consistent. And a nice retro hail too. So yeah. earlier I found a lot of pepper. This time it's really loosened up, smoothed out. Yeah. A lot more creamy. Very creamy. Uh, mm -hmm. And a lot more enjoyable. All right, so anyway, John, this cigar came out in 2010, but, you know, original uh, sure. blend with the Habano 2009, it's, you know, it's been out a while. Uh, do you think the quality of cigars has really improved over the years? Oh, of and, course. And in what way? Absolutely. Absolutely has. Uh, you know, you had the boom, mm -hmm. and that was a time cigars were so popular, they would roll anything into a wrapper mm -hmm. and charge a fortune for it, mm -hmm. to the point where tobacco was oversold, you couldn't source it, and places would be out of stock of cigars. Right. And... Yeah. Rather than keep, or, or you know, and that's why a lot of companies went away. Yeah. It's because they just couldn't put out a good enough product that people right. were willing to pay for. Mm -hmm. And that was part, I think, part of the demise of the cigar boom in general. You know, and now even the budget bundles are a good quality. That's true. And, that's you true. know, you're getting a good return on your cigar mm -hmm. dollar these days. Yeah. Because cigar smokers are demanding better. And in mm -hmm. order to stay competitive, cigar makers have to put out a better product. And they know that. Yep. If they're going to they're going to be that way, so you know we make a lot of comparisons in this business of, to to wine, mm -hmm. right? About how much cigars are like wine, and here's another one because remember that dopey movie came out about wine and everybody was into wine all of a sudden. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> and everybody was drinking sideways. Yeah, and everybody started drinking Pinot Noir, right? <laughs> and nobody would shut up about it. So it came out and everybody was drinking wine, and people became more interested in wine in general. Right. right. So knowledge became more accessible faster than mm -hmm. it did during the cigar boom because it was part of pop culture. It was part of the Internet was here now. Mm -hmm. So people could share these kind of experiences. They could share ratings a hell of a lot easier than they could before. Right. So the wine boom, while it's probably peaked, now we're in the middle of the bourbon boom. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's really hitting its stride. Things are getting artisan. Right. 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 So it's small batches, short runs, special recipes, and people are really going down the rabbit hole. Yeah. But you don't have to. The nice thing is, is the cream has risen to the top. So think of it as each of these industries has now progressed to the point where the average guy who doesn't want to immerse himself in the minute details right. still benefits from a better made product. 
mm -hmm. whether it be cigars, whether it be wine, whether it be bourbon. Right. So you can get your satisfaction, your desired level of satisfaction, right. uh, playing with better quality stuff made up to the standard that will satisfy a pro. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be an aficionado to enjoy it. That's right. It just happens to be that you have a lot of aficionado level stuff mm -hmm. at your disposal to try. Yeah, definitely. In fact, I very often will say, um, you know, we'll, we'll usually we'll usually say, you know, who's the cigar for? You know, is it for a beginner, a novice, uh, you know, a uh, experienced cigar smoker? Uh, and I'll even say, you know, even if it's a cigar that might be more for like guys like us who've been smoking a while, I'll say, you know, you should definitely try this, you know, right. because it, you know, it'll help develop your palate. It'll give you some taste that you may not experience. You're just going to stay with the mild stuff. And it's better quality stuff across the board, and I think that's better for everybody. I do. I do too. So, how's this hitting you now? So I would say, if I were to sum this up, this is uh, an enjoyable Maduro that's got more of a classic taste, right? It, so, do, it does. It does. So um, think of this as a throwback cigar mm -hmm. in, a, in a lot of ways. We talked about this when we smoked some of La Gloria, uh, La Gloria Cabana stuff. Right. And now when we're going back and revisiting Divino, mm -hmm. uh, La Traviata Divino Maduro for this classic uh, now smoking, I had originally written in our uh, review for the CAO guide. Yeah. Again, I'll go back to that. I said, right. CAO uh, La Traviata embraces tradition rather than disrupting it. Because if you take a look at like what some of the other things CAO has done, mm -hmm. like Flathead, yeah. like cons Consigliere, yeah. like uh, OSA, like Session, some of the mm -hmm. newer stuff. It's more this new school type of stuff. Right. This is more classic. I know the word Cubanesque gets tossed mm -hmm. around a lot, but I think yeah. the vibe <laughs> actually fits for a cigar yeah, like this. Yeah, I mean, you know, I found one thing about Cuban cigars, I haven't had any like a really, like I haven't had a Bahiki or anything like that, but they are very consistent throughout, and this is consistent too, and it's, it's, not, it's not necessarily complex either, it's just really consistent, really flavorful. I'm getting a little more earth now at the, um, now I'm getting down to the nub. Yeah, but um, I'm, I'm tasting more of that lajero. Yeah, the lajero more spice out. is really like kicking it mm -hmm. towards the end too. And they also make it at some other sizes. They make a radiante, mm -hmm. which is a six by fifty-two. I like those dimensions. Those good toros. I always say that. And then the en entrepido, which I actually put in my um, article About. on Churchill's. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a wide Churchill's, 54. Yeah. And slow burning, that's probably the better part of a two-hour yeah. cigar. 7 by 54, and, uh, and, I, and, I, and I talked about the Maduro version, too. So anyway, thank you very much for uh, watching. And John, thank you for coming on. It's always great to have you. You always have a lot of great information. Pleasure, my man. Well thank prepared. You for, thank you for <laughs> inviting me for a smoke. Thank you. We love that. And uh, please don't forget to uh, buy your La Traviata cigars at famous-smoke.com. We carry all the... CAO Cigars, mm -hmm. and we also are on Facebook, so mm -hmm. follow us on Facebook, follow yep. us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram, mm -hmm. and YouTube, where you're probably watching this video right now. Right. So. And if you like this cigar, and if you like this video, hit the like button, and be sure to follow us so you get notified next time we put out another video of Hashtag No Smoking. All right, so that's it for this edition of Hashtag No Smoking, classic edition. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and happy smokes.